guys, how are you all? Today we're back with another rant video. I haven't done a rant video in a long time because I feel like I've lately been reviewing a lot of anime. So today I want to share with you guys a rant that I've kind of been thinking about for a while. I've been collecting art books for a lot of years and so today I want to share my art book story and some of the art book tips that I've kind of come across. Art books are not cheap by any means. You will almost never find an art book that's under $30 unless A, the series itself is like six to seven years old or B, it's just not a very popular series and the vendors or the dealers are probably just trying to get rid of it. So for those of you who don't know, art books are collections of visuals that either come from a manga series or a visual novel game or just an anime. Art books are really great because if you have a particular favorite manga artist and you've tended to read all of their series, sometimes they'll come out with an art book that has um, a compilation of all their characters. If you like a certain series, single series from one mangeka, they might produce an art book that just has visuals corresponding to that one story. I love collecting art books because for anime and manga as a visual medium, I honestly think the aesthetic of the visuals are super important. Some people will tell me like, oh, I'll watch an anime or read a manga if the story is good, but I guess like the art isn't like too good. I find it really hard to get into a story if I just don't like the way it looks because you're literally staring at those visuals for like 24 episodes or like for how many hundred chapters if it's your favorite story. The art is obviously a huge, huge part of the anime or the manga or whatever you're looking at or playing. Obviously, I have some of my favorite artist styles and for me, the biggest reason for collecting art books is because there are certain series that are just timeless for me. I will never get over how gorgeous they look. I'll just like never get over the series. I just like love the manga artists. I'm a really big believer of supporting the manga artist or the anime company you like by buying their stuff because if you don't buy their stuff and they don't make money, then they don't have money to make more stuff for you. Today I wanted to share a few of my art books that kind of break down art books into a few different categories. The first art book is one of the older ones that I got. This is one of the rare ones that I got that were under $30. This is the Chobits art book and this is so freaking old. This is the very first art book that I got five to six years ago. It is produced by Tokyo Pop. And if you guys have been collecting manga for a while, you probably know that Tokyo Pop used to be this really big company. And then midway, they just kind of like closed. And so they dropped a lot of titles and Tokyo Pop stuff has just been selling out. It's just a lot of really great illustrations. The reason that I got this was because I'm a huge Clamp fan. If you're into Magic Girls, like Cardcaptor Sakura, or you're just into like Shoujo, most likely you've probably picked up something by Clamp. And if you haven't and you're into more shonen, you probably watched Code Geass, I'm guessing. Clamp has just really iconic, gorgeous art. And the moment I saw this, I was just like, I just had to get it. This is the first piece of merchandise that I ever got from a convention and I've never regretted it. I just love this so much. I think it's really worth getting because um, Chobits especially, they have this really like pale, soft, ethereal kind of style to the art. It's really different from like, let's say Tokyo Babylon or X or even Carcaptor Sakura. Chobits kind of has its own um, iconic trademark look, which is why if you're a big Clamp fan, this is really worth getting. And this kind of falls in the category of those like vintage flea market kind of last minute buys that you kind of have to rummage through like, to get. So the second category I kind of decided on latches onto the first and it's um, for art books that have been translated over here but they're relatively new. So this is the Vampire Knight art book and for some of you guys who are huge shoujo fans you've probably already seen this. This one is $28.99 Canadian so $30 Canadian or $25 to $27 US. This is a lot bigger than the Chobits art book here and I think you're getting more of your money's worth with this because it's hardcover, there's a really nice jacket which means there's also kind of like a sub-colored cover beneath the jacket, plus the size of it is bigger which means the art prints are bigger so I really think you're getting more of your money's worth. The only thing is this is a little thinner than the Chobits book. I was pretty impressed with this because it really does have all the great visuals that Vampire Knight has to offer. Because Vampire Knight is like a supernatural kind of fantasy series, a lot of abstract concept art goes into the promotion of the show itself. So when you like search a vampire night, usually you won't get like scenes that are realistic. Rather you'll get stuff where it's like vampires in front of like gates, in front of a 
cemetery, lots of roses, velvet curtains, all that stuff just kind of contributes to that eerie atmosphere. Vampire Night has a lot of unique kind of illustrations that are kind of like fan art, I guess, because you just kind of see the characters in these really, really dramatic poses that you wouldn't really actually see them in in the actual story. The jacket on this art book is a really unique feature of it because it's actually one big horizontal illustration all across. Because there's so much detail in this Mangeka artist style, having actual blown up prints, it's just so different. You'll get to see so much more of the manga artist's details, especially for an art with so much shoujo and excess details as in Vampire Night. So this is one of the ones you can get if you live in North America or Canada and you want a translated version and you want to purchase it at your own price, perhaps in stores, and you don't have to worry about shipping or anything, um, this is really awesome. So the third category of art books that I have are for art books that are in only Japanese, they haven't been translated here, but they are fairly popular series that have perhaps gotten anime adaptations. One of the big ones is Carnival. Carnival is an anime that came out last year, and if you guys have been following my blog for a while, it's the first anime series that I ever wrote recaps for. So if I actually go back and read my Carnival recaps, they're actually pretty bad, I think. But it gave me a lot of new experience for recapping and going through series, and I just really fell in love with how vibrant Carnival is. I got this on my first trip to Japan, I think. For those of you who don't know, the story of Carnival basically follows how the title is like. It follows a bunch of circus-like troops. There's like supernatural stuff in it, but because it's such a circus and crazy kind of whimsical aesthetic, the art is really vibrant, um, really pretty detailed, just really bright, and it just combines a lot of different um, textures. If you guys are looking for these art books, you guys will have to find them online because I don't know anywhere that actually imports them and sells them here. You might be able to find them in the dealer's room, but things are always a little bit more expensive than I would like in the dealer's room. It'll require a little bit of hunting, but the Carnival art book is really worth it if you like the series. So the last art book I have today is in the fourth category where it's expensive, it's more elaborate, the packaging is bigger, the book is bigger, and it's just a little bit of a splurge. For those of you guys who are more into hardcore collecting, if you're new to collecting, you probably won't want to buy something like this. This is the Sister Princess art book. Sister Princess is also a visual novel. But the reason that I got this was because I really loved the art. Like, I hadn't watched the anime at that time, and I hadn't played the game, and I basically knew nothing about Sister Princess, other than the fact that Sister Princess is a harem anime with, I believe, 12 sisters who are trying to fall in love with their brother. It's kind of like Brothers Conflict in the otome genre, but reversed. Um, it's a little bit old now, but this is really cool. Like, okay, so this is the box for the art book and it opens on the side. You just like unfold this thing. There's a few covers to kind of keep it hidden and then a giant art book comes out. And as if the packaging box wasn't enough, this has its own box. Yeah, elaborate packaging just means a few extra dollars you pay. I got this because it came packaged with a deal that I got in the dealer's room one day. It's like huge and it doesn't fit on any of my shelves. So this is volume one of the cover illustrations and it's just um, a lot of like portrait styled pictures of the girls. So depending on who your favorite character is, um, you can kind of like search through the book for them. They do them in different themes. So you'll have some that are like school day themes, regular themes. You have themes that just kind of correspond to the characters' personalities. And of course, because this is a harem anime, there is a section called Princess on the Beach. This has not only full page illustrations, but smaller thumbnail ones, half page ones, just more diversity. This kind of brings me to my next point in this art book collecting video. Try to collect art books for series that you really like. Sister Princess just kind of came to me kind of on accident and then I also bought it on a whim, but I ended up really enjoying this art book because of how detailed each of the characters are. Visual novel or gaming characters usually have pretty solid character designs. I feel like I sound like I buy a lot of art books on a regular basis, but I actually don't. I have just been collecting these on and off um, for like five or six years. If 
I like this series enough. Sometimes I will splurge and then I'll regret splurging and then I'll just flip through it and then the regret will disappear. And then the next time I want to buy an art book, I'm like, oh, I splurged last time. So there's a lot of anxiety that comes with collecting art books. I will probably make more videos on art book collecting because it's just a lot of fun stuff and I just really like talking about it. Let me know if you guys collect art books and if you guys have any great art books to recommend to me, I would love to hear them or like check them out because I'm just so obsessed with them. What is the biggest art book you've ever splurged on or what is the best deal you've ever gotten on an art book? So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Welcome to all the new subscribers, we're really happy to have you here on Little Cloud Curiosity. If you guys are looking for more from me, check out any of the links below. I'm always tweeting something on Twitter or writing something on my blog and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye!